like to give it a second. Doing a little early today. Uh, hope you guys get a chance to catch this now live. And if you do, that's awesome. If you don't, um, that's also awesome. <laughs> Hopefully you catch it later on the replay. Um, but today I want to talk about actually some really personal um, didn't really tell this story too much. I mean, I've told it multiple times, I think, on stage, but I've never done it in a live, and it's something that I don't always talk about of my own, like, deep personal life and my personal issues that I had in the past. But if you're just tuning in, this is Daily Motivation, 365 days of consistency, doing the same things over and over again until they become habit. And before we begin, I want to give you your angel numbers. Uh, we're at episode 252, 252, so number 252, let's see. Rest assured that your recent decisions are good ones. Move forward with your plans with full faith that they are right. Wow, man, I needed to hear that today. <laughs> Actually, I don't ever look at the angel numbers before I do the episode. Um, is it sometimes I feel in inspired to do them? And man, that was a good one. Rest assured that your recent decisions are good ones. Move forward with your plans with full faith that they are right. That's so good when you have self-doubt. So good, so good. So today I want to talk about the day that I committed suicide to my old self, to who I was. And the story actually begins with just massive frustration and massive anger. It's something I had to get over. That was the old me. The old me was always angry constantly enraged with every little thing just, just irritated me I was constantly frustrated my thoughts were negative about people about myself about my government about my country about everything hey Sonia how's it going hey and if I don't shout you out just I can't see you but I do appreciate you taking your time to to show me love uh, but thank you Sonia all the way from the UK appreciate it and I was just at a place where I was just completely angry. Like angry was, and then borderline depression because nothing was working for me. And even the things that were working for me, I felt like they were working to an extent. Um, and every time I felt like I took two steps forward, I would always get pushed three steps back. And each time I felt like, hey, things were working well. Hey, Marilyn, things were just kept pushing back at, at me and it was very difficult at the time where I got to a point where I challenged the universe. And I said, I remember out loud, I remember I was, I can't remember where I was, but I was in my room and I said, you know what? If this is the way life is gonna be, I'm good. <laughs> you can just take me now, I'm, I'm straight. Like if this is how everything's gonna continue to be, I don't need to be here. Like that's not worth living for me. And I felt like a burden to my family and my friends, you know, I several times where my brother-in-law had to bail me out of jail. I remember, you know, I had to call my mom up to ask her for some cash to pay for some gas because I just ran out of money. And I remember, like, I had lawyer fees, and I went to my pops and I said, you know, can you, you know, lend me, you know, 400, 500 bucks to help pay for my lawyer fees? And he said, no. He's like, listen, you're the one that got yourself in trouble. You got to deal with it. <laughs> Trying to help me build character. And I remember being so down and out at that time where I felt like a straight uh, burden. Good to see you in a better place and smiling. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's good to be in a better place. And I, I'll tell you how that happened is I, I ended up challenging the universe. And I said, you know what? This is the way it's going to be. I'm, I'm good, man. And, you know, the very first thought I got was my mother. And, um, you know, you know how the thought came to my mind, how you, but what about your mom? Because I know, you know, it would be devastating for her. But at the time, you know, I was like, I was going to write her a letter saying, listen, you know, I just can't be here. I'm sorry. It's just, this is not, this is not what I signed up for. I unsubscribe. <laughs> and I remember a week later, I'm driving down the street. I get to a fender bender and uh, completely smashed into another car. And, but I was okay, I was perfectly fine. And a thought came into my mind was like, listen, you know, if, if the universe wanted to take you, it could take you anytime. <laughs> it could take you anytime, Rich. It could take you anytime. So the fact that you're still breathing, you're still here, means there's something for you to do. There's something for you to do. And I had to ask the universe, what is it for me to do? 
and it wasn't until I, I became completely vulnerable and I said to the universe, okay, obviously I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so show me the path, show me the way. And what happened was I had to kill my old self in order to become my better self. There was things in my life that I was doing, the way I was thinking, the words I was saying, the feelings that I had, and the things that I were doing were detrimental to my higher self. It wasn't leading me to the person I was trying to become. So the old person was going through all those troubles. And what the universe was telling me was, in order for you to step forward into the life that you want, and to be the person that you want, you have to get rid of the old person that you are. Which was very, very profound for me. And I started doing it first with action. I didn't know how to do it at first. So what I did was I, I changed my clothes. <laughs> you know, T.D. Jakes talks about uh, when you get into a new arena, you have to wash your face. And so that told me, that told me was to change my clothes. Because I was wearing, you know, fitted hats and do-rags and, and baggy jeans and Timberland boots and all these things. And we all grow daily. Yes, yes, it's a daily, daily thing. But I had to get rid of some of the things I was doing. And so I thought the clothes I was wearing was attracting. So I started, I said, I started reading like GQ magazines and gentleman magazines and people that look prestigious, shirts and ties. And I said, you know, I, I want to I go towards that. That's, that's the person I want to be. And I started getting rid of my old clothes and buying some new clothes. And then I had to start changing the way I spoke. I started speaking so, the old me spoke so negatively. Everything was so complaining or it was about how the world was doing me wrong or it was about trolling other people. And I had to start changing the way I spoke. And so I made it a conscious effort to not say certain things. I stopped saying the word hate, like hate was completely removed from my vocabulary. Because I use it a lot. I, I didn't realize until I became conscious of it how much I use that word until I started using the word love more. And instead of saying hate, I said, well, I'm not into that. Or I'm not really, that's not me. I just started changing my vocabulary. And I started seeing my, my overall feelings change when I did that. And I started being more conscious of my thoughts. Whenever I got a negative thought, you know, there's a, a call and response. T. Harv Ecker taught me this to say, you know, no thank you. So when a negative thought comes into your mind, just say, no thank you. And then you replace it with a positive thought. So I started becoming more conscious the way I thought. And then I started becoming more conscious the way I did. I, I was a kleptomaniac. <laughs> Any, if it wasn't pinned to the floor, it may go in my pocket. <laughs> I used to steal. I, I'll be up with an honest. I stole. I stole constantly. I stole clothes. I stole wallets. I stole phones, I stole whatever I could because I, I was insecure. I wanted to have things to make me feel secure. And so I stopped stealing and that was a mantra of mine, Rich, you don't steal. I don't steal. I don't take something that doesn't belong to me. And that became a mantra. I kept saying it. And every time there was an opportunity to take something, I was like, no, I don't do that. I don't do that. And that became my mantra. And before I knew it, I was killing my old self. Bit by bit, day by day, the old self was dying. When it comes to fitness, the old self wouldn't work out. So I had to shift that and create a new habit, work out every day. I became obsessed with working out. Why? Because I had to kill the old self. The old self said, no, we don't work out. <laughs> I want a burger, I don't want no salad. The new self said, we're gonna work out and then we're gonna get ourselves a salad. And I had to keep doing that over and over and over again until it became the new me. I stopped listening to old music that I was listening to that was violent and negative and constantly uh, cursing and all these things. I shifted that from listening to more positive, motivational things, inspirational music. I started listening to, instead of rappers, I started listening to speakers. Instead of watching negative, violent TV, I started watching inspirational TV. And I kept making all these shifts from a negative to positive. And then what I realized was, one day I woke up and I wasn't the old me anymore. Until my vibration, my energy was different. Until people, I remember when I, me and Jazz broke up for three years, and then when we came back together, she said, you know, there's something different about you. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something about your vibe is different. Because I wasn't the old me anymore. I was becoming the new me. Sonia says, it is so true. We need to be more thankful and grateful for everything we have. It is so true. 
We have to be grateful for the things we have. But at the same time, we are the sole controller of our lives. And so the habits is what's keeping us from our dreams. Our thought patterns is what's keeping us from our dreams. Our belief systems is what's keeping us from our dreams. Our, the way we talk is keeping us from our dreams. It's nothing else outside of us. It's us. And once I made the shift and I killed the old me, by killing the old habits, the old thoughts, the old beliefs, the old, the, way, the old actions, I started becoming the new me. And as I started becoming the new me, I started seeing the outside exterior results started to change as well. I tell you, I've never been arrested since. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got to pat myself on the back 10 years. I've never been in the back of a police car. Great. <laughs> never got into any trouble in the last 10 years. Why? Well, no, that's probably a lie. Maybe nine years, nine, eight, eight years, eight years. Yeah, 2012, I got to some struggle. But 2012 was the last time. And I finally shifted my karma. I finally shifted the old me. And I had to let it die. I remember, you know, Jay-Z's last album, 444, his very first song is called Kill Jay-Z. Why? Because he even know Jay-Z, the old him was doing bad habits, you know, still cheating, still doing misogyny. And finally he said, you know what? I have to become Sean Carter. I have to become a good father. I have to become a good husband. And the only way I could do that is start killing the old me. I'm not that person anymore. And there's things in our lives that we still hold on to that we have to dead. I know it's old, it's hard because we become so accustomed to being in a certain way. But if we can make that shift of killing the old way, killing our old selves and embracing our new selves, that's how everything becomes the manifestations that we want in our lives. I think everybody and everything. So every, in your life, make sure you understand that if there's something that is holding you back, it's not something outside of you, it's inside of you. And that battle, you know, Alan Watts says it's the, I forget, Bakama Gita, they call him the East. But it just means an eternal battle, an eternal battle. So if you could fight that internal battle, that's where the battleground really is, not outside of us. But if you could fight that internal battle and get and kill and defeat the old you so you could produce the new you, that's when your life will change. I've changed I've changed so much in my own life from stealing, getting arrested, getting to fist fights, um, constantly uh, intoxicated with liquor and weed and always just never focused to being somebody solely focused and inspiring the world. And that change only happened when I had to get rid of and finally said, you know what? I'm no longer this person anymore. I'm the new me. And that's when my life started to change. Sonia, thank you. I felt like this one's a really powerful one. I've just been saving this one for a while. So please like, please share, please comment. And please watch the beginning of the video to see your angel numbers, which I thought were very profound today. Thank you so much for watching, taking your time. This is Rich Fontaine. Either you could agree with me or not agree with me. But either way, I feel this was a successful conversation. Love is love. Thank you, Sonia. Please like, please share, please comment. I appreciate you and all of you that get a chance to watch this now or later. Have a blessed day. Namaste.